And in this video, we're going to use Onshape uh, to create a drawing page that shows center marks and curves and arcs and dimension to uh, the overall dimension of something with a bunch of curves and arcs in it. Uh, so to do that, first I'm going to hit plus, uh, create drawing. I'm just going to select the template I've been using and hit OK. Uh, that's going to give us our drawing page to use. Uh, then I'm going to insert this image. So in this case, I got ISO 11. I'm going to insert that image in. Uh, so to do that, it should pop up. Otherwise, you can hit enter it, and then you find your image. Uh, once I have it, I'm going to start with the front view, which is in the lower left-hand side. So I click and I place it. Uh, then I'm going to do, in this case, I'm going to put all my different views down. I may not keep them all, uh, but first I'm going to come up and make my top view. Then I'm going to come back down, select my base, and come to the side, make my side view. Uh, then I'm going to select my base and come up to the top right and create my isometric view. I'm going to hit escape, so I'm done selecting views, and then I'm going to right click and hit show shaded view on that top, so I have that shaded. Uh, in this case, there's definitely some hidden lines, some lines I can't see in this object. Uh, so I'm going to come down and right click and say show hidden lines. And I want to do that on all three different views. I want my top view to show any hidden lines, and then I want my uh, side view to also show any hidden lines as well. Uh, so sometimes you don't want to see them, but in this case we definitely want to see any hidden lines that may appear. Uh, you can see on this right view it gets really uh, complicated looking because there's a lot of hidden lines. So hopefully we don't end up needing that view, but if we wanted to we could keep that view as well. Uh, next we're going to dimension the overall dimensions of this. So if I just click dimension and I try to go from the top, down to the bottom, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. It just shows me to the center of that hole or that center mark. Uh, so instead, what I want to do is I come up dimension and there's a drop down, and I want to get the maximum or minimum dimension. So I'm going to hit that top arc, and then I can come all the way down, and then I can get that dimension. And I want to pull it way out because I know there's going to be some different values I need. Uh, so I'm going to pull that out a bit farther than you may expect. Uh, you can do the same thing on the side view if you want to do it over here on the top and we can get our maximum value that way. Again I'm going to pull it down a little ways uh, so I have some room to work with. Uh, so I got my top and then my side those are the ones where I'd have to use that special tool. Uh, next I could go back to my dimension tool for most of my other measurements. Uh, while we're here adding in special marks, next we want to add in some center marks. A center mark goes in the center of a circle. So if you're looking at something and you see that circle, uh, then that's where a center mark would come in. So like on this uh, hole cut out, I can just click on that and it provides that center mark. Also looking at the slot, you can do the same thing. You can click on both sides of the slot. Uh, if you have an arc, you could also click on just the arc, so like this outer arc. I don't need to in this case because it's the same center mark as what I already previously had. Another tool we can add is what's called a center line. Uh, there's some different ways to add it. You can do a two-point center line or you can do an edge-to-edge -edge center line. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do an edge-to-edge -edge and I can just select both sides of my hole. So I select the right side, I select the left side, and it puts that center line. It's a long dash, short dash, long dash, and it shows where the center of the hole is. I could do the same thing on the side with my slot, and do both edges, and it puts my center line. Uh, in this case, if I try to do the middle one, I'll show you. I can do it, but you can't really see it because there's already a line there. Uh, so I don't really have to worry about that center line. I can see that where that is located, though. So now, last thing I want to show before we cut you off is how to dimension these uh, circles or curves. So to do that, uh, you probably want to wait till after you dimension some of your linear dimensions, uh, but I just want to show you while we're here. Uh, I'm going to hit dimension, and if it's a circle like we see here, I can just click on that circle, and then I pull out. You want to pull out at an angle. You don't want to come straight out horizontally. Uh, we can come out at an angle. Again, you want it between your images. You don't want it hanging here where it could get cut off on the side. Uh, so I could come somewhere like right in here and click and type, and it does that dimension for us. Uh, sometimes you have the same dimension, the same curve multiple times. So like on this curve up here, I have it on the left and right hand side. If you want, you can just dimension it once. 
uh, then if you're in the, still in that dimension, you can add to it, or if you hit escape, you can go back and edit, and we can say times 2, or x2, and that just tells us that we have that same dimension in multiple places. So I said x2 or times 2, that means I have it in two different locations. Uh, so again, you want to use that dimension tool to dimension any arc. So in this case, I have a circle, I have an arc, I'd want to dimension both of those. Uh, and up here in the slot, I already did both sides of my slot, slot, but I'd still have to get that arc as well. So I'd want to pull that out and dimension that as well. Uh, then we still have to go back and dimension all our linear dimensions. I'm not going to sit here and have you watch me. Uh, I'm sure you can go through and dimension those. Uh, I'll catch you at the end. After we've gone through and added those dimensions, I may end up moving some things as well. Uh, so now we have this object of fully dimension. It looks uh, we've on each of the slots of holes. We've got some X and Y is what I like to refer to uh, to some placement uh, dimensions along with a radius or a diameter. If it's a circle, it's a diameter. If it's curved, it's a radius uh, dimension as well. Uh, so after we've done all that, uh, we have object, the side view here doesn't have anything on it. So we can actually get rid of that side view. So I could just right click or just click and delete or right click and delete and get rid of that view. Uh, so that gives us our, isomet our di fully dimension drawing for this object. You can see quite a few different measurements we needed. Uh, we need the height of the slot. We need the location of that slot, the radius of that slot, and so lots of different information we need on this uh, particular object. Hopefully this helps you in creating isometric uh, multi-view drawings uh, for your different shapes. Uh, thank you and good luck.